Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained, we're going to be talking about the Generate folder. This is a really cool folder with some very unique effects that you can generate things like lens flares and grids and shapes from scratch. So starting off, you can apply and composite these on video clips, but what I've done is went to File, New, Black Video, and just created a new solid black video for us to begin working with. So the first one is four color gradient. This is a cool way to make a four color gradient and you can choose the different color points on the effects control panel. So this is the default, but you can make them any color you want just with your standard color picker. You can also pick the position of the points. So this is just four corners, but I could put one in the middle and you know, put them wherever just to make backdrops or moving lights perhaps if you keyframed it. You can make the blending more contrasted or blend it together if you like. And if you did apply this directly onto a video clip, you have the options to blend it with a blending mode. But this is a simple way to create gradients, kind of like your gradient tool in Premiere. The other one, and kind of going out of order, but more related here, these are just alphabetically ordered, is ramp. This is kind of just like the four color gradient, except instead of four points, it's a ramp from one color to the next. This might oftentimes be what you need. Sometimes you just need two point gradients. And like I showed in some previous videos, like the channel set mat effect, you can use these generate effects to generate kind of like what a layer mask would be in Photoshop for your video clips or just create backdrops or things to blend and mat and key out with. So you have the options to do linear or radial ramp and you can adjust the position of either point. Going back in order now from the top, we have cell pattern. This just generates kind of a, a cool cell pattern. But the fun part about these is that you can animate the evolution, kind of like we were doing with the turbulent displace distort effects. So if I increase the evolution and add some keyframes from one point to a few rotations later, we can get this bacteria biological type of texture going on. And there's a decent variety of different cell patterns and textures you can do. So I can imagine tons of different abstract ways you can use this, especially when combined with some of the other blending modes and blending effects to create transitions or just textures on clips or even backdrops. It's black and white, but if I did want to add some color, I can use something like the tint effects that we've previously mentioned to add my own color into this or blend other things. Next up, we have checkerboard. Pretty self-explanatory. Allows you to create a checkerboard of different size or width. Again, imagine just the different ways you can use this for using mats or as texture, as backdrop. You can adjust the color of the checkerboard and you can adjust the way that things are scaled. So just a basic foundational kind of pattern to have. Next up, we have a circle generator. There's tons of different ways that you can use a circle shape. Let's say I keyframe a circle going from close to open and I applied this on top of a clip you'll see that I can use this shape to kind of create my own mask or use it with blending modes to fill it in. So you might think, what do I need a circle for? But remember, whenever you're working with black and white, you can use the, that information kind of like a layer mask or as blending information to stack and combine. So next up, we have an ellipse, kind of like a circle. Uh, this kind of has that laser beam mask quality at first because it has a little bit of glow. You can choose the inside and outside color to be whatever you want, and you can move the position to wherever you like. So you can have it just on its own, or you can composite it on top of the original. There's tons of different ways you can use this. Maybe you could use this to call out a specific object, like put a circle around it and track that object across the frame. Maybe you could blend it in different ways. You could set up a portal or something, and blur it and add some color. But that is the ellipse effect. Next up, we have the eyedropper fill. And this is actually an effect that you will want to apply on something other than a black video with things going on. And what this does is it takes one single point, by default the exact center point, and uses that as the color for the entire frame. So you'll see if, the, if there's a moving video, it's kind of constantly changed. So if I let that play, you'll get an idea of what's going on. We're basically seeing through one single pixel made to fill the entire screen over and over. This is cool. I found to create cool flickering light effects, especially if you were to perhaps lower the opacity and blend with the original a little bit. 
it can create almost like a, a projector type of flicker based on that middle point. You can always move the sample point depending on what kind of colors or motion is going on in your clip. See, in this case, it's just completely red. But if I move it up to the sky, we'll see more blue colors. This is an interesting and curious effect. Uh, I'd love to know if you have any cool ideas that spark in your head throughout any of this playlist. Leave them in the comments on how you might use effects or cool ways you can stack them. The next one we have is grid. So this one, if I apply it on a black video, just creates a grid. Pretty cool. We can make it wherever we want. And mind you, it's just the white. It's not necessarily the black. You can choose the color of your grid right built in. Let's say we were to apply a wave warp onto this grid. Now we have like a cool wavy lined backdrop and we can play around with the type of wave warp that's going on. Hey, we could create cool backdrop textures or grids or futuristic things. Next up, we have lens flare. This is your classic lens flare effect. You have your standard different type of lens flares, 35 millimeter, 105 millimeter, and you might animate a lens flare in or blend it in with your original video clip, depending on what kind of clip it is. You can adjust the brightness and strength, but that's your standard lens flare effect. You might be pretty familiar with something like this. Next up, we have lightning. This is pretty cool. This is starting to get into the territory of After Effects, something that After Effects might be a lot more powerful with. But you do have your basic lightning generation options. So the start point, the end point, the angle, where it's coming from and where it's going, how many different branches and segments it has, the color of it, the speed of the amount of flickers and branches. You have all these different ways that you can use the lightning and then blend it in. Next up, we have the paint bucket effect, kind of like something you might be familiar with from MS Paint. It takes one point on the screen and acts as if you clicked the paint bucket tool on there and fills it in with a certain color. So we can see the fill point right now is exactly right here. So this is all the connectivity that it's been able to get with that flower. You can increase or decrease the tolerance. And in a way, this is a cool way to work around having a quick selection masking tool in Premiere, which is usually hard to mask things by hand. And there's no rotoscoping options really, like you have in After Effects. So not only can you fill in a certain selection with the color, you can manipulate it in a way so that you're essentially getting a cutout or selection without having to go in there with the pen tool. The next effect we have is right on. I'm going to work on a black video so you can see what's going on. And when I drag it on, you see one white point appear. If I make that brush size a little bit bigger, there it is. Now we're, to be able to see what happens with this effect, we're going to have to use keyframes. So if I was to keyframe the brush position from here and move the, the X over a little bit and increase an amount of stroke length in seconds, you'll see that it creates like a brush stroke. So I've used this effect to create drawing or writing effects. If you'd like, I have a tutorial on my channel just about creating scribble effects with the write on where we go a little bit more in depth, show you how to keyframe and make cool disappearing brush strokes. But that completes our Generate Effects folder. In the next video in this playlist, we're going to go into the Image Control section, see some cool things we can do with black and white and some more color balance options. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet to stay tuned for all of my new videos. And you can find all of the videos in this Every Effect Explained series in a playlist on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.